say, hey, we got a president now, whether uh, you like him or not, and the market's up today, and, and uh, we won a game Saturday, so, so life's good today. Coach, Trace Bofton was able to get back in there. Uh, uh, how do you think he uh, did there at center? You know, I was glad to have him back. Uh, you know, he played good. Uh, you could tell he'd been off a few weeks. You know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was his best game, but, uh, you know, he's a leader of that offensive line. He makes a lot of the calls and stuff. So it was, it, it made a big difference having him back. Okay, here we go. Coach, are you confident in Jack's return this week? Yeah, I, uh, he, uh, he's been out throwing the football the other day. He looks good. And so, uh, Excited about having him back, and and Tate's a day-to-day -day deal also. So, for sure, it looks like we're going to probably have Jack back, and uh, and we're we're having our fingers crossed for Tate also for this week. So it'd be nice to be full speed at quarterback for a change. Coach Billings, is it going to be a if Tate's able to play? Is it a fifty-fifty split at that point? Does how do y'all how is it a what's the plan on that? Maybe not the full plan, but. Is he going to have more playing time than he usually does, or how does that work? Uh, good question. We don't know yet. You know, first of all, it, we'll worry about that if if uh, if he's ready to go this week. Obviously, he did. He he played well against Liberty, and he gives us some things that uh, Jack doesn't give us. But you know, uh, you know, a few years ago we played them both in the last couple games against uh, uh, Marshall and uh, Law Tech, and won both games and. So I don't know. We're, we're just going to see how it goes and how they're playing. And uh, it's it's great to have that. You know, people sometimes worry about that. I think it's a it's a great thing. Competition's a great thing, and and having two choices is also a great thing. And uh, they both bring uh, different uh, things to the table. You know, Jack's such a great leader and and throw the ball well, and you know he's done a great job moving our football team. So uh, I feel good with either one of them, and. It was nice to have Trey in there get some experience. So I feel like after we get all these guys back, with everything we've been through, with Tate getting an opportunity to play, with uh, Trey getting an opportunity to play also, that now we have some experience at that position. It makes you feel a lot more comfortable. Western Kentucky team, I know it's a different personnel than, than what they had a year ago at quarterback and some other positions. But uh, just looking at this Western team, what, what stands out? Well, you know, offense, they're just such a well-coached football team. Uh, offensively, they have most of their O-line back. They have their running back back. Obviously, it hurt losing their quarterback. He was a really – he was a special football player uh, offensively. But uh, can run the ball very sound. Uh, they always give you a lot of uh, issues. Defensively, they've got eight returning starters who had, one, had you know, one of the best defenses in the league last year and plus, you know, one of the best players in the league. Uh, at defensive end, so uh, they're just so good on defense, and then they're they're so solid in special teams. Uh, you know, it's going to be a game that it's going to be tough. I mean, we got to play in all three phases. We we got to be really good in special teams. We got to protect the ball on offense and score. We have opportunities. And defensively, same thing. You know, it, they, you know they they uh, they all run some tricks and double moves and reverses and. You know, we can't give up any explosive plays and make them go the long way. And uh, just uh, uh, hopefully we can hang in there and, and play with them. Coach, defensively, where do you think y'all made the most progress? I know y'all were playing the team that supposedly, you know, is FCS and doesn't have quite the talent as some of the other teams y'all play. But defensively, where did you think y'all made the most progress? This day? Well, you know, like I said, I, I – I'd said I felt like we got better in the run game the last few weeks, and uh, I, I really felt like in the uh, in the defensive backfield against the pass, and even against the run in the backfield, I thought uh, we played better. Uh, we gave up less explosives, and uh, you know I, I think that was a, a good start for us. I think uh, we gained some confidence in the back end. But I was really proud of our defensive backs how they played both the run and the pass. Does this offense feel like it, you know, it, whenever everything's kind of centered around that ground game, uh, that makes all the difference in the world. Do you, do you think that's important? Uh, obviously, things are getting better there. Well, there's no question we're getting better running the football. You know, we got some good running backs. The O-line has matured and gotten older. Uh, it's like anything. The game is so much easier to play when you can run the football. I mean, 
especially how they run, run the ball now, I think it'll really help Jack, you know, as far as throwing the football, you know, if we can run the ball. You know, and, you know, the tough thing the last few years for Jack is we, you know, he throws the ball really well, but we hadn't had a running game to go with it. So they've just been teeing off on him. So you get a running game where they have to, they have to stop the run. It just makes Jack that much dangerous as a thrower. Uh, Coach, I know you said Frank Gore was dealing with uh, that toe turf. Is, is what's kind of his status, and uh, you know what's the aspect for him this upcoming week? Oh, he's good. He'd be ready to go. Uh, you know, he's you know it's a little sore, but uh, and he's kind of had it for the last few weeks, so it gets sore on him sometimes as he plays the game. Uh, but uh, he's good, and you know the great thing is we've got you know we've got we've got Mayberry, and we got uh, uh, Perkins. And then, you know, it was nice to have D. Baker back. You know, he'd been – had a little shoulder, and he made a couple big, nice runs. He showed some great speed on the field. So, that gives Frank a lot of uh, rest and keeps the thing healthy and uh, it limits his amount of reps. So, I feel good at that position at running back right now. And then, also, is, uh, is Tim Jones still nursing his uh, hamstring as well? He is just a little bit, you know. He uh, he practiced last week, and we looked to play him, but we just thought we'd try to, if we could, wait one more week. But uh, I, I'm hoping and I am think there's a good chance he'll be gold this week. Coach, uh, Don Rags, though, what's his status? Rags, is, uh, he had decided he left the football team. So he, he's another guy that kind of – he kind of opted out. I think he opted out of school also, so. Uh, he is no longer here. And also, too, Coach, just with Western Kentucky ranking in the bottom half of the conference in scoring offense, what are some things are you looking to take advantage of, especially on the defensive end? You know, the thing with them is, uh, you know, they've had quarterback issues. Uh, again, they got a really good old line, and uh, but. Uh, the thing we've got to do is that they're also really good on defense too, you know. So we, we got to play field position. I really think the kicking game is going to be really cru crucial this week as far as uh, uh, field position on the field, you know, those hidden yards. And uh, that way offensively we got opportunities, we got to score. And then the thing we have to do, they, again, they do a really good job as far as uh, double moves, trick plays, trying to get explosive plays because they've had issues as far as moving the ball down the field some. So that's – we've got to eliminate those if we can do that and uh, kind of keep good field position. I told our defense, you know, we got one, we got to get off the field and we got to give the offense good field position because it's hard to go a long way against their defense. And then we got to try to get some tape backs. Obviously, we, we had the – uh, North Alabama put the ball on the ground a few times. We never got one of them. We got one interception, but we, we need to get some more take backs and we got to, we got to give our offense good field position. And that also is huge in the kicking game, and, but we need that to score points to, to win this football game. Coach Billings, I'm sorry if my internet messed up. Did you, I heard you talking about Ragsdale. You said he's not with the team right now, so he's not on the roster anymore as well. He is not on the roster, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. We good? All right, guys. Appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Uh, Coach, how do you think the uh, the line worked with Clopton back and uh, how the ground game um, uh, you know, we're glad to have Trace back. Obviously, big, big leader on the football team for us, and uh, you know, a lot of experience. Had 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 a couple snap, had a couple pre-snap issues, which I, you know, was really disappointed in that. And um, I think that might have been a combination, you know, him knocking some rust off, and also uh, with Trey, new quarterback, new cadence, things like that. So that that was a little bit disappointing. But um, you know, once we kind of got out of our own way, um, you know, I, I felt like we. We got it going on the ground, especially in that fourth quarter. That's something that we really will emphasize today in meetings is, you know, just being able to finish. That's something that we haven't been able to do. But, uh, but yeah, I thought, I thought Jerkwon Scott, uh, Scott did a good job. You know, he, he stepped in and did a really good job at right guard. He showed, he showed some flashes uh, without a doubt. Doss is getting better. You know, Doss is getting better every day. So um, I, think, uh, I think those guys filled in and did a, did a good job. Coach, looking uh, looking down the road, when you get both Tate and Jack back, you know they have obviously have different skill sets. Um, would there be a, you know, a chance maybe to to use both of them in a game to you know to that advantage? 
I think so. I, de I definitely think so. I, I think, um, you know, both of those guys give us give us uh, some advantages uh, in, in you know running the football, obviously with with Tate and you know Jack as polished as he is, you know throwing the ball and you know um, I think that that would definitely be something that we would have to have to take a look at. I, I know it's um, it's hard for defenses to uh, you know to prepare for two guys, so so it's definitely definitely something that you know right now we just want them to both get as health, as healthy as possible. It's been kind of a struggle, but. Um, you know, when they both get healthy again, you know, we'll, we'll definitely we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But I could see that possibly being a, a scenario without a doubt. Uh, Coach Tubit, can you talk about Foxy a little bit? Is he okay at guard? I saw him. Or is it, how long is is he going to be able to be back next week? What's the plan with him? Yeah, he's you know he's got the hand deal. He's playing playing with the cast. Um, you know, he, he pl tried to play with it. Um, you know, against Rice and just just can't. You know, just couldn't really get a grip on guys, and it was just really frustrating for him. So. Um, you know, we're trying to let that heal and see if, if uh, I know I think he's got another, they got to take another look at it, get the cast off and, and uh, you know, just try to get him, try to get him back. But uh, I'm not 100% sure what, what his status is going to be, going to be this week. But um, I, I just know he's, he, he's not very happy playing with that cast on his hand. And, and if he, he's, he's a team guy too. So he knows if he's not going to be 100% effective. I mean, he, he understands that. Um, but, but yeah, another senior leader that, that we'd love to get back as soon as possible. Coach, can you give us a status on Brandon Hayes? It looked like kind of an, an awkward, you know. Yeah. I think, a lot, I think it looked a lot worse than it was, to be honest with you. Um, you know, obviously, ball, ball security, too. I mean, it was kind of, golly, that, that was, uh, we were lucky to get that, to get that one back. That, that was a pretty good turn of event. It kind of had the ball bounce our way for, for, uh, for once uh, this year. But um, I think he'll be fine. Um, you know, he's, he's uh, he, I'll tell you what, he keeps getting better every week as well. And I know we're, we're kind of using him a little bit in some of that speed sweep stuff. We just hadn't quite, uh, you know, I know he had the drop Saturday, but, um, you know, hadn't had as many targets, you know, actually at, at receiver, but uh, he's doing a really good job on, on a lot of that speed sweep stuff. We, 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 we need to try to get him down the field a little bit and see if he can't, can't make some plays that way too. Coach, the offensive line, uh, what would you, is there something you pinpoint on, on why they've been so much better on, on blocking in the ground game this season? Um, I think it's just repetition, Patrick. I, I you know, I, I think it's just, um, you know, we're, we're still trying to just carry over a lot of things week to week. Um, I, I think some of those younger guys, some of those new guys, like I said, with Jerquan and Doss, you know, just getting, just getting the reps. I think they're, they're definitely, uh, they're getting better each week. And then tailback wise too. I mean, shoot, I mean, Frank, uh, you know, they, we're, we're doing some really good things up front, but then Frank, you know, Frank made a couple of plays Saturday where, you know, it wasn't blocked exactly how it needed to be, but he, you know, he made a guy miss and, and uh, you know, Mayberry, Gave us some quality reps in there. D, D did some really good things, and then obviously, per, you know, Perk's Perk. I mean, he's he's uh, he's going to run hard every week, and and you know, really really proud of the way those guys. Uh, Coach Davis has done a great. I thought he did a great job just rotating those guys Saturday, but um, I think just overall repetition, and and like I said, hopefully uh, hopefully we can we can catch our stride here late in the year. Coach, could you um, talk about the WKU defense, particularly that that front seven? Uh... Pretty good group, um, and la last year shut us down pretty good. I think their DC really does a heck of a job too. Yeah, I, th I think um, you know against the run. I mean, you know, we're, we're we've been watching film yesterday. All all, all this, there's not a lot of things that look great, you know, on film. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna commit uh, uh, commit to stopping the run, and they do a, they do a great job of that. Um, I, I think number ten, the defensive end, is a guy that, that that really really stands out, and then both their safeties. Um, the thing that's most impressive about their safeties. Again, they're, they, they're relying on them to be run fitters and get downhill, but uh, just just tackling wise, probably two of the best tackling DBs I've, I've seen all year on tape. So uh, again, when you do get, you get a little bit of, of, of a crease there, you get to, you know, that three or four yards, those safeties show up quick and, and they, they don't miss many tackles. So uh, run game wise, I mean, we're going to have to uh, really kind of have to be patient and, um, you know, kind of take, take what they give us there. And then, you know, usually if they're, if they're gonna they're gonna have those safeties playing up there tight, I mean it's gonna make some make uh, create some one on one matchups on the edge. So hopefully we can get that going as well. Good. Coach, I know last yeah. week you had you had talked about. I know last week you had talked about. Sorry, last week you had talked about. Um, you were kind of upset about the not having a touchdown. I want to get your idea of where you were thinking as first of the game things go wrong all of a sudden like they have in the past, but the kids didn't 
it seems like it didn't get down this time. Can you talk a little bit about that? And even as a coach from you, you know, what's the emotions for you in the press box that time? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's frustrating. It's, it's one of those deals where, you know, you, you, when bad things happen early like that, you start to kind of second guess yourself and, and you might try to force a couple of things that, you know, I mean, I think we were doing a lot of things. We were being really productive in the run game and, and doing a lot of things well. We were just, you know, shooting ourselves in the foot and making mistakes. So um, it kind of shakes your confidence a little bit as a play caller um, to try to maybe kind of go outside of what the game plan was or try to look for a quick fix. So, you know, I, I think it, it, it kind of – you kind of almost got to act like a player. You got to kind of have a next play mentality too as a, as a play caller as well. And I think that's what, what our guys did a good job of. Like I said, you know, finishing has been something that we hadn't uh, – hadn't done well um, earlier in the year, but to, uh, you know, come out in, in that fourth quarter and, and score, you know, score 17 points in the fourth, it, you know, a couple big third down conversions, Trey, Trey, Trey made some plays on third down. The, the, one of the biggest plays of the game, I think, was that fourth down throw to, to Demo. Um, you know, he, he kind of slid in the pocket right there and hit him on the slant. So um, I was just proud of the way our guys finished. Um, again, it hasn't been, hasn't been easy uh, this year, but, you know, hopefully we can, we can build on that. And then also, too, with your philosophy as a play caller, I know with their running game, um, it's going to be just with their run defense, Western Kentucky, you know, how do you kind of, like, navigate that? The run game's not working. Do you lean more pass heavy or are you still trying to stick with your game plan? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, when you're facing a team that, that commits so much to stopping the run, I think you got to put, um, put a lot of those decisions in the quarterback's hands. Some of the RPO stuff, um, you know, that we carry – um, can actually turn into some downfield shots in, in some one-on-one -on -one situations. So it's not always just, you know, slants behind the linebackers or, or you know, or, or bubble stuff. Um, a lot of that stuff can convert into some one-on-one -on -one shots. And, you know, you kind of um, rely heavily on the quarterbacks to, to know when those one-on-one -on -one shots are, are, are to be taken based on down the distance. You know, first and 10, if you got a one-on-one -on -one matchup that you like, you know, we'll go ahead and pull it and, and let one fly. And then, you know, second and 10, we need positive yards. So, a lot of that, uh, in my opinion, as a play caller, we, we kind of lean more more on the RPO stuff and hope that uh, hope that uh, you can crack them a little bit in the in the run game, but that you make some plays uh, outside with the one on one throws and hopefully loosen them up a little bit. Uh, Coach, me and to ask you about uh, Narcissus Driver. How is his injury healing, and you're not expecting to get him back anytime soon? Yeah, drive, I'm, I'm excited about Driver. I, you know, he, he uh, I, think, I think he's going to be ready to roll um, this week, uh, which, which, again, depth-wise, um, I think we need that there. Tight end-wise, it's good to have, you know, we've kind of been playing with two and kind of crossing our fingers every week that we, you know, we didn't lose one because 12 personnel is part of our package every week. So, um, you know, Cole and, and Grayson have been doing some good things, but, the, but to get Driver back, I think, will, I think will help us. Plus, you know, that he's, he's a little bit bigger. You know, he's, a, he's in that 250, you know, almost 260 range. So, um, uh, I think he'll help. He'll help in the run game and, and shoot. I mean, before you know, before that ankle injury, you know, he had that, that uh, long touchdown against Tulane, and he's been doing some good things in the past game too. So um, I'm hoping I'm hoping he'll be ready to roll Saturday. Good. Any other questions for Coach? All right, guys. Have a good week. You too, man. Hey, Coach. How you doing? How you doing, Coach? I'm doing great, man. You guys all right today? Good, yeah, Coach. Coach, I guess uh, talk about what was the biggest improvement that you saw in the game against North Alabama? What's the one thing that after the game you said, now that's – we finally – or maybe that you were struggling in previous games, but that game you really saw a lot of improvement in one area. Um, two things really, to be honest with you. I, I thought tackling overall was a lot better and not giving up the big play was a lot better. Coach, you spoke, uh, I think it was last week, about getting some guys some uh, consistent reps in that backfield, you know, with the switching around. Um, it looks like Brooks kind of in that second half really started to have a little swag, play with a little confidence at that corner spot. Yeah, he's he's been, like I was saying every week, man, He's every week he's gotten better. Um, he's just a guy who consistently gets better. He comes to practice hard every single day. Um, you know, he's a very smart football player. He's very versatile. He understands football. He understands schematics, what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it. And he's a guy that we're, we're, we're very happy with how far he's progressed for sure and how, you know, when he continues, like I said, every week he can, continues to get better. 
get better at tackling, get better at coverage, get better at knowledge of the system, and it's starting to show. Could you talk a little bit about what you guys expect from uh, WKU's offense? I know uh, they got a transfer quarterback from Maryland, but uh, looks like they're they're struggling a little bit to put points on the board. Yeah, but that's a week to week deal, right? So, um, I mean, to me, they look very talented on offense. They can run the football. I think their offensive line is coached extremely well. They do a really good job of of making sure that they stay on their targets, uh, blocking the correct fronts. Um, they do a good job running the power and some other running plays that they they really do a good job of there. Quarterback is athletic. They've played multiple quarterbacks. Um, all of them look like they all have similar skill sets. Maybe one of them can run around a little bit better than the other. Kid from Maryland looks like he's definitely can run around a little bit. Um, tight ends are very good. Receivers are very, are very good. I mean, everybody's conference to me looks like we, you know, we're going to have our hands full every single week. So we just got to make sure that we take care of us, you know, do the little things this week and make sure we own the line of scrimmage. I think that's going to be extremely important. Put them in some throwing situations where we can, you know, maybe do some different things there. But if this could be a third and short ball game all day, we'll be in trouble. Coach Billings, he was talking about, you know, some of the trick plays they run on offense. So for you as a defensive coordinator coaching up your players, you now what are some, you know, things you tell them not to fall for those tricks and to stay home and do their responsibilities? You know, we tell them every week, honestly, there is no such thing as a trick play as long as you do your job. You know, burn your eyes and your keys and make sure that, you know, like a lot of times, uh, you know, like a double reverse passes on stuff, they'll try to fake block and all of a sudden, you know, run the route where, you know, they're assuming that they blocked it, it see the actual block, you know. So I, I think you got to do a good job of burning your eyes and your keys and doing your part. Um, and I say, you know, I think that's every week, really. But, you know, especially with a team like this who really focuses on trick plays, especially when they pass the 50. You know, last year they got us on a reverse. I know that for a touchdown. And every every game they have somebody who's, you know, you know, as soon as they pass the 50, they get some kind of trick play from week to week. So we'll definitely have to be on the lookout for that. But it's really about doing our job, truthfully. Coach, Coach Michael Pleas Jr. got got into the game a little bit more. Uh, can you talk about his progression as a freshman up till now? Yeah, he's another player um, that from week to week, you know, uh, he probably would have played earlier, truthfully, but he missed all of camp, you know. So you got a guy who, um, you know, when he really didn't start practicing with us till school started. So he's definitely somebody who gets better from week to week. He's definitely has some good pass rush ability um, that we're very high on. And uh, hopefully he continues to grow like he is. Coach, to kind of piggyback off his question of the youngsters, um, I'm not sure I've seen Booth the last couple of weeks. Can you give us a status on him? Uh, hopefully he's a go this week, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, he was, he was another one that was playing a lot early. But, you know, this year the roster constantly changes from week to week. So you got to do what you got with what you got. Questions for Natron Brooks? Natron, it looks like over the past couple of weeks uh, with, with uh, extended rips in the same spot and not having to move around so much, looks like you're getting a little bit more comfortable with the corner. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Um, just being able to sit still and just really getting it, um, being able to just uh, dissect playing corner a little more and um, my eyes are getting more used to seeing the route combinations, you know, just playing in that position every week, getting better every week. So a lot of routes, you know, I just be able to tell now um, just by their splits and alignments, the routes that's coming because now I'm seeing it every week and I've been seeing it so many weeks, so I'm just playing faster. Also, too, with Western Kentucky, you know, running a lot of trick plays for you as a defensive back, how do you, what are some things you do to, you know, make sure you're playing assignment football? Well, the thing that you really have to do is just uh, really lock in on the receivers and um, not just look in the backfield because obviously they're running trick plays and your eyes are caught in the backfield. You obviously um, lose your man. So the biggest thing is just to keep your eyes on your man and just um, do your job, be secondary contained. Natron, uh, you went into the half. Um, what was the message 
at the UNA game at halftime. What were you and your you and your teammates telling each other at halftime and come out in the second half and played so well? What was the message? Well, the message was just keep playing how we was playing um, because, like, the first half we wasn't playing bad. You know, we were put up in a lot of bad positions, you know, with the um, special team, turning the ball over, offense, um, turning the ball over. So we just had to understand that uh, North Alabama was good, uh, had a lot of good field positions. So our message was just come out, keep playing how we playing, limit the explosive plays, and let's make plays and just have fun. And then now, you know, coming back and having some more games under your belt after the, you know, layoff with the postponements, how do you feel ribbon-wise heading into the last stretch of the season? Um, I can understand, of course. Um, how do you feel like you are with your rhythm, like, you know, heading into the uh, last of the season? Oh, well, I feel like um, I feel good about my rhythm. Like, I feel like, like I said, since I've been playing a lot more on um, just that corner, my rhythm feel good and it feel like now nah, I bet it instead of having pass deflection, now a lot of those players are going to turn to interceptions because my rhythm is, is better and I just been feel more comfortable playing corner now and not just moving all around over the field, trying to play everywhere, play everything, which I'm capable of, but you know, being able to just play one position is a big difference. Natron, I guess the question I have for you is, now that you've kind of gotten over half the season, um, this season has been so weird as far as playing football for the players, coaches, everybody. Um, what is your feeling right now? And maybe you can't say, but how do you feel about the season? And how are you guys keeping each other, you know, going to the same goal with everything that's going on with COVID, everything that's happened? You know, this has been a tough year for Southern Miss. How do you guys, how are you guys staying together as a unit and, and you know, getting over all this? Well, most definitely, um, a lot of stuff been going on, but, the biggest thing about um like the people who are here now, the players, everybody wants to be here. So it really it's easy for everybody to um just pick together as a team because all the players who didn't want didn't want to be here, they um obviously they opt out. So everybody who here actually, you know, they um we bought in and everybody wants to be here. So every week, regardless of win, lose, or draw, we um all come together as a team and we just keep the same positive energy moving forward, like hey. We still got a lot of stuff on the table. Like, we don't look at weeks like, hey, we losing or we lost. We ain't got no opportunity. Every week we come out to win regardless. So we just continue to fight as a team. Any questions for Antoine Robinson? So Antoine, uh, you had some time to watch uh, WKU's defense any? Yeah, I, I watched the film a little bit, looked over them a little bit. Yeah, Patty seems to a little bit. And, um, they playing a lot of um, good man courage. Yeah, so I've been checking them out a little bit. Um, Antoine, if you go into, say, uh, Tate's okay to play and, and you got both quarterbacks uh, this weekend, as a wide receiver, is it difficult to switch from one quarterback to the other when you're out there with the way maybe they throw the football, the placement of the football? Is that difficult on a wide receiver if if it's a two quarterback system? Uh, no, nah, I wouldn't look at it as difficult because like we work with both quarterbacks, so like the timing already be on, so like just working and getting in there, so it'll be all time. We just be already ready to go. But we already practiced with two quarterbacks, like both of them getting real same with the one. So we already be here to what's going on and ready for it. And then with Western Kentucky, you know, having their, you know, safeties come down and make plays in the run game, you know, and having those one on one coverages outside, you know, how exciting is that for you as a wide receiver? You know, you'll get those matchups. <laughs> Just saying what it made me do, it made me smile. Uh, I just look for the challenge. Like, if you feel like one on one, you can challenge me. I feel like I'm the best man, made the best man win in a one on one matchup. I'm ready for it. That's how I'm coming. Like, I'm coming to win every time. If you feel like you can put your man on me one on one, I feel like I can bet on myself. 
and the real smart other wide receiver and the wide receiver courts and the quarterbacks to get us the ball, but we're going to win every time. And then also, too, just with the run pass option plays, you know, those may be, you know, useful this week. You know, how do those work from, like, a wide receiver standpoint, you know, like your communication with the quarterback? Uh, just make sure you catch all the signals for the run RPOs. And if they on the run, just make sure you're ready to block and you block consistently, you know what I'm saying? But run your route to the – run your route full speed. And if you ain't getting the ball, just lay down your block.